This is the fifth year, and Mikey's been teaching me how to get people to applaud when I welcome them, so thank you. Thank you. It worked. All right. So as I said, this is the fifth year, and thank you all for coming to lovely, hailey, sunny, random weather outside Portland. Um, just a little, before we get things kind of started, a little bit of logistics. There are bathrooms upstairs. There are bathrooms downstairs. There's an elevator in the back that will take you down to the second floor to those restrooms. Uh, downstairs, there will be an unconference today in Lola's room. What that means is we have six tables. They're all numbered, and there's a big uh, whiteboard with sticky notes on it. And so that is a self-organized group of conversations. So that is really what we think of as our second track. We have a single track of talks, and we have a formalized track of discussions downstairs. I really do hope you all check that out. Uh, there's no questions after talks. Um, we ask the speakers to come to the front of the stage after their talk. We have 10 minutes when we switch speakers, so you can come up then, ask them questions, and interact, and that, we find that works a little bit better for everyone. Uh, and then if you haven't found it yet, the Wi-Fi is an open network, uh, just labeled right the docs. So what, what is this thing that we're all sitting in the middle of? Um, I think the best way to really understand it is, in the beginning, we really were trying to build an open source event, so something like PyCon or DjangoCon, these open source community conferences, and that's really where we've taken our inspiration, is something that's you know, user-focused or you know, person-focused, community-focused, uh, if you will. And that's really what we try to do here, is have a community-focused event with the goal of bringing people together and building community. So really, the most important thing is about having all of you get to know each other, not about sitting there and watching what's on the stage. That's gonna be a huge part of the conference, but that is not the most important part. It's really about connecting all the people in the room. So this is version 2.1. Because I'm a software developer, I like to version things. Um, so as you know, that's like a pretty serious version number. We're like, we blew past version one like in three years. Um, however, <laughs> this, we have, we have some idea what we're doing, but really what I'm trying to convey with this is everything we're doing is not intentional. There's a huge amount of organization that is just accidental. So if you see ways that things can be improved, if you th see things that you might like that would make your life better, let an organizer know, talk to somebody, or just if it's a small thing, just change it, you know? If a number's missing on a table, just write another number. It's really about kind of empowering you all to do what you wanna do within this space. Um, so don't, don't assume that we know best. You also have lots of great ideas, and we want you to tell them, us, tell them to us. So what is your job here? At this event, your number one thing is you need to make friends. Because I think a professional career is a much more enriching and enjoyable thing when you have friends in the industry. And I really hope that this conference, I know for a lot of people this has enabled that. And if this is your first year or your second year, I really hope you're happy to see some of the people you already know and you'll make some new friends. Hopefully you'll learn something as well. You know, this is a, a professional event. You're learning stuff about work. Um, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have to be fun. And I think that's a really important part as well. Like, we're not sitting here, you know, watching talks and then going home and trudging around, right? It's, we really do try to make this as fun as possible. And I think that, you know, work and fun don't have to be mutually exclusive. And that's one of the really big driving principles. So how do we act in this space, really? These are the four words that I've kind of come up with, is welcoming, open, supportive, and positive. And really, this is just about, like, this community is what you make it. Everyone that comes into this room, the way that you act is how this conference feels. We can come up here and say whatever we want, but it's really the way that you treat each other and the way that you interact and the respect you show each other and the openness you have with your ideas and the ideas you share in the unconference downstairs without regard for, you know, whatever else might motivate you. That's really what makes it special. So there's, like seven or eight of us organizers, there's 400 of you. So the way that you act is the way this conference will feel, and I really do implore you to make it the best possible event that you can. So the best way I like to think about describing this, I once went to a conference, and they invited me to talk to people. They gave me explicit permission, and it really changed the way that I interacted with the event. Instead of like being shy in a corner and seeing groups of people talking and not joining them, I went up and joined them, and that was a really profound difference, and I met lots of interesting people. So the best way that I like to think about this is if you're standing in a group of people, always leave room 
for one more person to join you. Don't enclose in a circle when you're standing in a group. Leave a space open, right? So if there's three of you, leave that fourth space open. If there's seven, leave the eighth space open. Allow people to join your groups. So the best way to think about this, <laughs> it's the Pac-Man rule. Always stand like a Pac-Man, ready to invite a new friend in and not, then not eat them, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so yeah, just, just remember that, especially, I was at the party last night and I was gonna start going around and like telling people, it's like, you need to open up Pac-Man rule. And I was like, oh wait, I haven't told them yet. I'm not allowed to, you know, tell them not to do it yet. Um, but please, just, this is one of those really interesting social experiments that if you see a group with an opening, don't be afraid to join it. It might be awkward, you might walk up and they're gonna stop and you're gonna be like, ah, I'm introverted. Uh. <laughs> um, like, that is how you make the most of this conference, so you have my permission to do that. So, we also have a code of conduct. I would like to invite all of our wonderful organizers up on stage. If you can tell us, oh. <laughs> so you can, you can tell organizers because they have this wonderful yellow lanyard. Gold, <laughs> sorry, gold lanyard. Um, so yes, so if you have any issues, if you have anyone that's making you uncomfortable, if you have anything that would make you more comfortable, any of these people are happy to talk to you and we can help resolve any issues that you have. So take a look, if you have any issues or any ideas or any suggestions, these are the wonderful humans that you are allowed to talk to and you are encouraged to talk to if you have any issues. So, organizers. <laughs> so I do, I, I like to have a little bit of co commentary on code of conducts because I think they're becoming standard in the software industry, but there's been some resistance. Um, code of conducts are really the minimum thing that we expect out of you. If you kind of behave the way that doesn't violate the code of conduct, you're not gonna have a good community, right? That is just really a way that allows us to have a framework for kicking people out if they're not acting in a way that we, you know, value or, other, or if they're making other people, you know, uncomfortable. But that is not like the goal, right? That is the minimum expectation. We expect much more from our attendees, and every year you all have done an amazing job of continuing to make this community an open and welcoming space, and that's really what we expect uh, from everyone. Oh no, I forgot to change the pictures from the different years of the hike. So this is last year's hike. Uh, <laughs> it rained both years, so you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> but if you look on the Flickr, our photographer has taken some amazing photos. Um, around the venue, but yeah, we had a hike on Saturday. We got hailed on, we ate chocolate, it was great. <laughs> um, oh man, sorry, I was a little bit stressed out apparently and did not actually change the photos. But you all were here for the reception last night, right? So it was downstairs, it was in Lola's room, you don't need photos to, uh, to remember what that looks like because you're gonna be down there later today talking to each other. Um, but yeah, and we had the writing day as well. So we had, I think, 100 people or so in this room working on various open source projects. Uh, we had folks from Mozilla, from Google, working on Kubernetes. Mozilla was working on Mozilla Developer Network. We had MediaWiki. Uh, we had people you know, running code that's gonna maybe run in space one day on telescopes. Um, I mean, there's just lots of really cool projects that were going on yesterday, and there was lots of contribution, and it was really exciting. It was just folks getting, sitting around, learning from each other, and getting stuff done. So that was yesterday. Today, we have our main conference track, but then after lunch, we have lightning talks. So after lunch, both days, and then also at the end of the conference on Tuesday, we'll be doing lightning talks. These are up to five minute talks where you're able to come up on this stage and tell this room of people whatever it is that you're interested in. This can be tech writing related, it can be kind of whatever you really want it to be, um, but try and make it fun, and that is after lunch today. So we had the sign up sheet for today out yesterday, Today we'll have the sign up sheet for tomorrow. So if you're excited about doing a lightning talk, uh, the sign ups will be at Reg, I believe, around the snack break. Uh, again, the unconference is downstairs in Lola's room. It starts after lunch today, after the lightning talks, and then it goes all day tomorrow. So check that out. And there will be a big board downstairs uh, with all the schedule on it, and so that 
changes dynamically as people move cards around and add new cards. So uh, we'll do our best to kind of come up to the stage and give you some warnings uh, about what's up there or, or what's down there. Um, but I really do recommend you check out the Unconference. It's one of my favorite parts of every event, and it's really where you, you connect with other people that are here. So, every year we try a few different experiments or new things. Um, one of those this year is conversations. Uh, Kelly actually went, one of our organizers went to, what was it, SUPCONF, I believe? And they have this format where you have speakers come up for 20 minutes, and then they have a 10 minute conversation after the talk. And so we're gonna try that today in our morning sessions. We're gonna have speakers come up, and then all of you are gonna be prompted with a question, and then you're gonna talk. So this is really kind of trying to seed the unconference, get people to start talking to each other, and really experience that, the joy that is meeting everyone else that's here. Uh, and so hopefully that'll get you excited about doing the unconferences uh, later in the conference. So the other experiments that we did uh, is the workshops yesterday. We had one morning and one afternoon workshop. Um, for those that were at the workshops, was it good? Did you like it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we only, we only had 60 people, so in a room this big. <laughs> uh, we also moved the Sunday events to the Crystal Ballroom. Uh, so in the previous years, I included photos of the other venue because it was actually at a separate venue. Uh, so this year, we actually did all of the events here, which, which vastly simplified organizing, and I think it just vastly simplifies attending, right? You only, you only need one venue, you go one place, you get to know it, it stays the same, uh, and life is, life is better. And we also scheduled a few unconference sessions uh, before the event. So we had, I think, four or five uh, pre-scheduled unconference sessions just to kind of seed the board downstairs. Uh, there's one on the Write the Docs meetups. There's a few more um, that I'm blanking on right now. But uh, definitely check those out. And so those are a few of the experiments that we're running this year just to see how they work. And uh, definitely give us feedback on those. Uh, I do want to say thanks. Oh, yeah, one, one more item. We have a huge team of volunteers that also just makes this conference possible. And they are all wearing blue lanyards. So those are also folks that you can talk to about, you know, kind of ordinary issues. If you have code of conduct issues, it's usually best to talk to a, an organizer. But if you can't find one of us, you're welcome to talk to volunteers as well. Um, so I would just do want to say thanks to our sponsors. Uh, we have Madcap and Google in the back of the room. We have a bunch of other folks that have stickers and people uh, scattered around the room. Um, all of our volunteers, all of our speakers. And I think, one thing that people often forget about is, is the attendees, right? Like, if this room was empty, it really wouldn't be that cool, right? <laughs> so, it's, so it's really all of you that believe in us, that buy tickets, that come to Portland, that you know, share your knowledge, that really make this community what it is, that allows us to exist, right? So it, it really is everyone in this room that believes in this idea, that allows it to be something that exists. So I do wanna say thank you to everyone that's here and all of our wonderful speakers and sponsors. So just, <laughs> so this is just a few of our, our wonderful sponsors. We actually had a bunch this year, and they really are what make the event possible. Um, we basically plan the event so we can pay for the food and the venue from ticket sales, and then sponsors are really what provide all the other good stuff that we do. And so it's really them that's allowing us to, you know, make this event awesome instead of just okay. Um, so thanks, thanks to them again. Uh, and also, if you're not on our Slack, I think we have like 1,800 people or something in our Slack network. Uh, so that's a really great way. You know, we had the first few conferences we had, and there was this really great enthusiasm, and it was really exciting, and then it just kind of like frittered away after a couple weeks, and you're like, how do I keep people connected year-round in the community? Uh, and we found Slack has really been like this magical thing that allows people to stay connected and have a little bit more more interaction with folks in the community uh, all year round. So if in like two weeks you're kind of like coming down from like the conference high and you're like, oh, what have I done? Jump in the Slack network and you'll be like, oh right, there's wonderful people in the world and, and I have access to them. Um, so, so that is a really, a really magical thing that I've been very, very excited about. And also, don't forget we do have a Prague event that is in September 10th through 12th in Prague. <laughs> uh, if you needed more excuse to come, uh, and so Mikey, who was up on the stage, is the uh, main organizer for our Prague event. So if you're interested in sponsoring or anything else, uh, have questions, she's the person you can talk to. Um, but yeah, that's always a really, really fun event. It's a beautiful venue as well there, so. 
Also, if you want to stay in touch with us or do anything on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, however that works. Uh, <laughs> so feel free to just use the write the docs hashtag um, or tweet, a, tweet at us at write the docs on Twitter. So that is kind of the logistics and introduction. Every year I try and do at least a little, little, little bit more kind of what's going on in my brain. Um, and so this year I was like, oh, I have to say something like really profound and I need to like have some impact. And then I really started to think about it. And I'm like, what I'm doing is so, is so minuscule and inconsequential to what our community as a whole is doing. And so I really want to do is, is spend the most of this time just highlighting some of the efforts of folks in the community that have really taken off uh, in the last year and the really amazing work they've done. Um, yes, new community efforts. So we've sent out eight newsletters. So we've, we've had this kind of Slack thing going for a little while. Um, and everyone's always like, we want to have an archive of the Slack. We want to have, there's all this like great knowledge that kind of passes through it, but we're not capturing any of it. And people are like, let's just like log it. And we're like, wait a second. We have a bunch of people whose job it is to take a stream of knowledge <laughs> and turn it into words that are then more structured and organized. If only there was some way to, to take that skill. Huh. <laughs> and so I have to thank Kelly. She was the, the real driving force behind this one. Um, yes, she is. <laughs> we also have, um, so uh, Hillary as well, who's I believe here somewhere, and Jennifer also have contributed a lot to this. Uh, there's a few other people that I'm almost certainly gonna forget. But we sent out eight newsletters. Uh, it's been, a, had a really good response. I think it's really exciting to have that kind of archive of some of the knowledge that's passing through the Slack network. I think that was a really, really interesting way to kind of take, to kind of leverage the skills of our community in an interesting way that really kind of added value to what we were already doing. We've done, I believe, five podcast episodes. So there's, I think there's, our, our podcast kind of spawned out of the Slack network, but I think there's folks in like, a, like eight time zones apart. So it's like US, West Coast, Europe, and Australia. And somehow they managed to record a podcast together at like 3 a.m. for somebody, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but they put out five podcasts and they're really doing something cool there as well. So I'm really excited. We have a, a Slack podcast channel. If you have feedback or you have ideas or stuff you want to contribute there, um, so yeah, that's another really exciting uh, community effort. Uh, this has been going on for a couple years, but the meetups have really, really done an amazing job. And I want to thank uh, Mike Jang, who's done an amazing job, and Margaret uh, Ecker, I believe, uh, who have really been kind of like shepherding and, and herding the meetups. I just want to give them a round of applause, because that has just been an amazing... Um, So yeah, one of, one of our speakers, we got a talk uh, that, was, that was talking about tech writing in Siberia. And we were like, wow, like, that's so amazing. And we were, we were chatting last night, and he's like, yeah, like, we love it. Like, we're going to do a Write the Docs meetup in Russia, up in the north, and we have folks in Japan and Australia. Uh, Swapnil down in Australia is just doing amazing work, building a really strong community there. So it really is turning into a global, global idea. I think they're going to try and do a one-day uh, conference or meetup. Uh, sometime this year or next year down in Australia. So it's really like becoming a, a global community of people that's really magical. And I, I love that about the internet, that we're able to just influence, you know, and have community members and folks that can really run with this idea on, you know, anywhere in the world. Um, so really, we're, we're really starting to have a lot of reach with the meetups, and it's really exciting uh, to see that happen. Yeah, we have 1,800 people in Slack. Like, <laughs> that's like seven of these rooms. <laughs> like, this feels like a lot of people. There's like way more people there. Um, so anyway, just on like one last thought before I, before I allow you to converse among yourselves, um, I just want to touch on Write the Docs as an organization and just kind of what I'm thinking about. So the way I'm really trying to conceptualize the community that we're building and kind of my role within it is thinking about Write the Docs as a community garden. And I, I took this analogy from Scott, who's uh, helping with Support Driven. So he's also local to Portland, and Support Driven is a very similar community for folks in kind of the support world. Um, and we have a lot of overlap. We have a lot of similar folks in both communities. Um, that was really a, re a great analogy that he gave me 
was just thinking of the community as a garden and something you don't want to like, you don't need to do a lot of work on. I mean, a lot plants grow themselves, they produce fruit, it's all beautiful, but you need someone to go in and actually pull weeds and do a little bit of work to make it what it is. But you also want to let people, you know, have experiments and do things. You know, you want somebody to like be growing, you know, squash out in the corner and it's, it's cool, but like he's getting a little out of hand, but like we'll just like hang out and watch him, but like I think it's gonna be fine. Um, so I, I really like this analogy of, of a community garden and that's how I've started to think a little bit about the community as a whole. And so where that really comes from is trying to figure out what sustainability looks like. So my background is in open source. I have been working on open source sustainability for years. Um, and really, I guess the, the fundamental thing that we need to kind of figure out is write the docs as a, an open and interesting community and we put everything out in the world. We, our Slack is free to join, our newsletter is free, our talk videos get released directly after the conference to the whole world at the same time. But it's really hard to kind of find ways to raise money if there's nothing that you have that's exclusive. And so that's really the model that I'm trying to figure out is how do we not go down the slippery slope of starting to wall off parts of our community in order to generate revenue to then support the community, right? Because that is a very slippery slope. And I would, that's really what I'm thinking about and that's kind of what's on my mind is how do we continue to have a community that can release everything to free, for free, have people do this amazing work, but also have a couple paid positions for people that can actually be community managers, that can really you know, be the point of contact on Slack and can let me do less work. <laughs> 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 um, so that's, so that's really where I'm at, is like how do I remove myself from the center of this and build an organization that's sustainable, that has you know, disparate parts in all parts of the world doing really amazing things, but find a way that we can you know, pay at least a few people to do the work that they need to do to make the community a valuable and ongoing thing. And so that's really, that's where my head's at, uh, just because I think that's an interesting thing because what I'm now gonna ask you <clears throat> is where your head's at. <laughs> so kind of what, what is the thing in the next year that you're most excited about doing? And then the really pertinent part for, for me and for everyone else here, right, is, is how can this room full of people that wanna help you, how can they help you make that a reality? And that is the, the cue or the question that I will leave you with is, you know, what are you excited about? And you know, when you come back next year, what's the story that you wanna be able to tell, perhaps on the stage? Um, about what you've done with your year and you know, how can the community help make that possible. And so with that, I will welcome you all once more to this beautiful venue in this beautiful city, in this uh, country. <laughs> um, and please uh, talk amongst yourselves and enjoy the conference. Thank you.